all right uh, so today is the quiz review all right and uh, a Wednesday there is uh, gonna be in-class quiz and uh, yeah, for those who didn't come, uh, please, uh, if you encounter anybody who is taking the class, please <laughs> make sure they know it's going to be like an in-class quiz on Wednesday. All right. So what I'm going to do today is uh, to give you several additional problems to walk through them and uh, uh, kind of uh, to tell you a little bit more about what the quiz is going to be about. So w the problems I'm going to cover today in combination with the... Uh, with the like self exercise problems I posted uh, I think two weeks ago and combined with the homework problems you already solved uh, those are probably the best uh, review materials uh, you have for the for the quiz all right so what's going to be covered uh, in the quiz second is pretty much the entire uh, module one and two so uh, first of all, we went through the fundamentals of uh, uh, aerodynamics, and uh, uh, one of the most important thing is uh, using Bernoulli's principle, right? So we went through this uh, incompressibility, basically how to uh, when to use Bernoulli's principle, and uh, computing the pressure out of a velocity field, and uh, also integrating them to f to compute forces and uh, moments are. Uh, yeah, one of the things uh, we may test uh, in quiz one. And uh, also, uh, another important part of uh, what we're going to be covering is uh, a flow around the airplanes and the lifting line, right? So be able, being able to compute the flow field induced by vortices and, uh, uh, and adding them up using the principle of superposition um, is a big part of uh, the quiz. And finally, the flow over airfoils and uh, thin airfoil theory. So uh, compared to what I showed last time, uh, there is just uh, the addition of uh, uh, not just how airfoil shapes and angle of attack changes pressure distribution, but also lift and moment and the center of lift and how the shifting of the center of lift as a result of a changing angle of attack affects stability. Right. So these are the things uh, uh, that's going to be covered. So. Uh, today I'm going to work through one example for each and uh, in the quiz uh, uh, we are not going to be able to test the all three problems because each problem might be pretty long right so um, yeah so so what you're gonna see today uh, is gonna be a lot more than what's actually gonna be in the quiz but today I'm gonna be working uh, through three examples right all of them are uh, possible to appear in the quiz okay so first of all uh, we have the single vortex model of a wing. So, um, the problem is that uh, a very simple model of the flow field around the lifting airfoil is the free stream speed of uh, a U-infinity aligned in the x-axis. So, the free stream is going in the positive x-axis plus a vortex, a single vortex of circulation gamma in the uh, clockwise direction. Actually, I wouldn't uh, say in the clockwise direction, just uh, a... A, uh, a vortex of circulation gamma uh, centered at the quarter chord of the airfoil, right? Uh, uh, assume that the airfoil is in the XZ plane and the quarter chord is actually located at the origin and we for enforce the cutter condition so that at the trailing edge of the airfoil, okay, there is no flow in the direction orthogonal to the chord of length C, yes? That's right. Yeah. 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 Those are uh, depend on the level of modeling fidelity. They uh, they are similar things, but not exactly the same thing, right? So here I'm using a low fidelity model to model the flow field, right? So there is not even any vorticity at the trailing edge. So as a result, what I can enforce is that uh, the direction of the flow is aligned with the airfoil, right? So there is no flow in the orthogonal direction. But in the higher fidelity model, if I have vorticity distribution around the entire airfoil, 
right? Then I can enforce that the vorticity at the trading edge needs to be zero because otherwise the vorticity exactly at the trading edge <coughs> is going to be inducing a very large velocity in the direction orthogonal to the airfoil. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, so in this case, we just uh, use a single vortex model, right? And basically, the first question is uh, when the airfoil is at an angle of attack of alpha, what is going to be the circulation of the vortex in order to enforce the cut condition? So basically, this is saying that okay, we know the quarter chord is at the uh, is at the origin, right? So this is the origin, and the chord uh, is of length c. So there is a a quarter c um, ahead of the origin and uh, three quarter c downstream of the origin and the entire thing is at an angle of attack of alpha right and the free stream we know is u infinity in this direction so if you don't have any vortex sitting at the quarter chord the velocity at the trailing edge is just the u infinity and it does have a component right unless the angle of attack is zero then the free stream is going to have a component orthogonal to the airfoil itself right and how big is the velocity component if we decompose the u infinity into the direction aligned with the airfoil and uh, orthogonal to the airfoil what is the orthogonal component okay the angle of attack is alpha yes so it's fine, fine alpha. yes this component is going to be u infinity times sine of alpha that's right all right, now we add the vortex to exactly cancel that component, right? So that vortex, of course, we know has to be in this direction so that the velocity induced from the vortex is going to be exactly canceling, right? And then what is the velocity induced by the vortex at the trailing edge point? Anybody remember the formula here? That's part of the exam, right? So the formula is actually different in two dimensions and three dimensions. This is actually the simple version in two dimensions, right? It's gamma over 2 pi, right? In three dimensions, would be gamma over 4 pi. And, uh, but there also has to be different uh, uh, sine angles uh, you have to take into consideration. But in 2D, uh, there is no sine angles. It's just the gamma over 2 pi. And then divided by the length, the distance between the point and the center of the vortex. In this case, what is the length? Yeah, 3C over 4, exactly. So this is how much velocity is induced, and what is the direction of the induced uh, uh, velocity? Well, it is exactly going circular, right, around the center. So in this case, it is exactly in the opposite direction of uh, the u infinity times sine alpha. So this velocity has to be exactly equal to that. All right, that helps you calculate what is gamma, and uh, it is going to be in the clockwise direction, right? So gamma is going to be... The answer is gamma is equal to uh, pi cancels out. So 3c over 2 times pi times u infinity times sine alpha. Right? OK. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, what if it's um, more related to the exam? Can we use notes? Yes. Yes, you can use notes. And uh, yeah, a a any notes you can bring, uh, not limited to any pages or anything. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, but but no no computers uh, no uh, cell phones. Yeah. Okay. Can we have the notes in our cell phone? Uh, no, I prefer you print them. Yeah. Okay. So uh, second question is uh, uh, what is the pressure field, right? Now the pressure field has to be computed using Bernoulli's, right? Okay. And for you to be able to use Bernoulli's, you have to compute the velocity field, right? Okay, we know that uh, we can use Bernoulli's because the flow field is the uh, addition of a uniform flow plus a vortex flow, right? Both are irrotational. If you compute the vorticity out of a uniform flow, it's zero. If you compute the vorticity out of a flow field induced by a vortex, it is also uh, zero uh, vorticity, right? So as a result, we can use Bernoulli. And to use Bernoulli, we want to first compute the velocity field. And that's actually exactly a part of the question I have in the... Uh, in the practice uh, questions, right? I mean, if you if you look at that, uh, it's actually uh, 
it's overlapping. So the velocity field that has an x and y component. So let's just denote as u x is going to be first of all we have u infinity, right? And then plus uh, what's induced by the vortex is going to be gamma divided. I ask you to compute the p as a function of x and z, right? So it is effectively gamma over 2 pi r, but uh, uh, because we asked x and z, so the magnitude is going to be 2 pi divided by square root of x squared plus z squared, right? And then there is an angle. There is an angle of the flow. So if you decompose the flow in the x and z directions, you get to divide by another square root of x squared plus z squared. So uh, so you have it over here, and in the x direction, it'll be uh, minus z. Uh, actually, yeah, it'll be plus z. So, so the the higher the z is, the faster uh, the the when z is higher than the uh, center of the vortex, the f induced flow in the x direction is positive, right? And u z is equal to there is no free stream component, and the, the induced flow is going to be negative when x is positive so it's going to be 2 pi x squared plus z squared any questions on, on these formulas uh, why did i arrive at these uh, velocity fields all right so so there is a there is a one over square root component and the decomposition in the in the two different directions has another z over square root of x squared plus z squared and also x over square root of x squared plus z squared right all right. Okay. And then uh, with the velocity computed, uh, we can compute the pressure field using Bernoulli's. Okay. So the P, uh, basically P naught at the free stream plus half of rho uh, U infinity squared. That's the uh, stagnation pressure at the free stream is equal to P of XY, uh, XZ plus uh, this, right, plus half of rho times ux squared plus uz squared, right? So that's Bernoulli's. And uh, we already figured out the formula for ux and uz, right? So then uh, we can just uh, compute the p of x and z would be equal to p naught uh, plus half of rho of u infinity squared minus uh, this thing squared and uh, minus this thing squared, right? And if you do the math, uh, uh, the u x squared would be u infinity squared minus uh, 2 u infinity times gamma z 2 pi x squared plus z squared, right? And uh, uh, minus another um, well, minus another gamma z over 2 pi x squared plus z squared uh, squared, right? And then minus u z squared would be minus gamma x over 2 pi x squared plus z squared, right? Uh, squared. So that would be the pressure field. And uh, uh, for these components you can actually add, add them together because uh, there is a everything else is the same except for there is a z squared and there is a x squared right that actually cancels with one of these and uh, uh, basically you can simplify this a little bit yes I can't read the last term in that top line it's row over what a row over two sorry oh. a row over two yeah so that's a uh, half of row half of row u squared is the uh, yeah, is the velocity component of the stagnation pressure. Yes? Uh, I have a question about the first part. Um, yeah. So why, uh, is, it, is it like part of the definition that not only is the flow is going to affect the general of the airflow surface, but also that it has a magnitude of the Like, why can one say that um, if it's really thinking about how it's going to pass some other thing about how it's going to affect Can you say again, like, uh, not only is the uh, flow tangential, but also what? The magnitude. The magnitude actually doesn't have to equal to u infinity. So, um, so, so for airfoils, uh, like, 
Yeah, the magnet actually doesn't have to be infinity. For, for airfoil with a finite angle at the trading edge, the, the flow is not equal to infinity at the trading edge. So how can you say that the flow is finite? Like what, what allows you to say flow is finite if you can't think of that flow as finite? Which is just some like arbitrary thing. Oh, so, so this is because the entire flow field is a modeled as a, a linear superposition of uh, a uniform flow field, which is just uh, uh, U infinity in the x direction and zero in the y direction. So that's uh, velocity field number one. Velocity field number two is the flow induced by the vortex. right? So, so the velocity here as a vector is just a summation of these two flow fields. Right. And uh, um, so basically, one flow field is, is in this direction, the other flow is in this direction. And uh, we, the color condition here explicitly says that uh, we are enforcing that uh, uh, the summation of these two flow fields is in the uh, direction parallel to the airfoil. Right, so that, that's why like, uh, we are, basically this is a, a vector, uh, vector superposition of these two flow fields that uh, left to this uh, sign off. Yes. Oh, why is the direction of the circulation? Yeah. Yes. So the direction of the circulation is such that uh, the, uh, the the red velocity is the flow is the velocity induced by the vortex, right? The black velocity is the first component, the free stream component. Basically, the summation of them has to be tangential to this direction. So I basically change my coordinate. So that uh, we are analyzing a coordinate that is uh, along the airfoil and orthogonal to the airfoil. And I'm just uh, adding, along the airfoil, it doesn't matter, right? Because it's not part of the condition. And uh, orthogonal to the airfoil, I have two velocity components. One is uh, uh, the free stream, which is U infinity sine alpha. The other one is induced by the vortex, which has to go against uh, uh, the velocity from the black component, right? So that makes sure that uh, uh, the circulation has to be in the clockwise direction. Yeah, so that uh, induces uh, this uh, red velocity. All right. Okay. Other questions before I go on to integrating the pressure. All right. So now uh, the next question is basically integrating the pressure right to get the total pressure force per unit span on the control volume so here i'm drawing a control volume of radius r uh, of radius r right and uh, uh, essentially what i need to do is to integrate this pressure field multiplied by a unit normal on this uh, control volume so the unit normal is going to be uh, having a direction of x over square root of uh, x squared plus z squared and uh, z over square plus z squared. So that's my unit normal of the control volume, right? Okay, so if you, uh, so that's my n. So if you multiply p with n, okay, uh, uh, first of all you can do some simplification on p, right, as I said. So uh, the u, u infinity part cancels out, all right, and uh, this part uh, becomes minus two u infinity gamma uh, z over two pi x squared plus z squared, and the third part, uh, as I as I said, the z squared plus x squares uh, they combine to cancel with part of this uh, x squared plus z squared. So it's only so what I want to say is it's just a function of r, right? Okay, so, so basically, if you add x squared plus z squared, it's r squared, right? And everything else in this uh, equation depends on x and z only as a function of x squared plus z squared. So, so it's just, just a function of r. And we are going to see that uh, when we integrate just a function of r over this circle multiplied with a unit normal, it'll just go away, right? Because uh, we are basically integrating a constant multiplied with a, with a unit normal. Okay, so um, so basically we are going to be integrating over this uh, uh, this let's say surface uh, p times n. Okay, and uh, first of all the p zero term cancels out because we are integrating over closed contour, right? Uh, and uh, we are in uh, multiplied with a unit normal. So so any constant uh, uh, multiplied with a unit normal integrating over closed surface it goes to zero. Right, uh, 
and uh, also this one is essentially a constant because it's a function of r and over this surface we have constant r so both terms goes away the only thing we have is uh, uh, this minus 2 and 2 cancels rho u infinity uh, gamma z over 2 pi x squared plus z squared times the uh, times the uh, surface right d uh, ds okay and uh, uh, basically oh uh, and also times the times the normal times the normal all right okay and uh, uh, so uh, something you can further transform is that uh, okay so let's express this angle so let's use an angle uh, theta and if we use the angle theta this unit normal is actually going to be cosine theta sine theta right that's the unit normal and uh, uh, the x squared plus z squared is actually uh, what what is x squared plus z squared? It's we have a radius r, right? That will be r squared, and uh, uh, also z over square root of uh, uh, x squared plus z squared. Actually, let me let me write it out. So we have two pi uh, r squared, but like one of the r can can be combined with the z to form a uh, to form a sine theta, right? Sine theta, and uh, uh, and then times my uh, cosine theta, sine theta, and the ds can be written as r times d theta times the uh, span, right? Times the span can be written out. And uh, uh, so because I'm calculating the force per unit span, so let's just assume the span is equal to 1. So we are going to be basically having an integral uh, of either sine theta times cosine theta or sine theta squared. Right, so what is the integral of sine theta times cosine theta over a circle? Well, I mean, you can think about it several ways. One way is uh, if you remember, sine theta times cosine theta is equal to half of sine two theta, right? And the sine two theta integrated over a circle is equal to zero, right? So the first part is equal to zero. The second part is sine square theta. What is the integral of sine square theta? Not zero anymore, right? It's it's a, it's an integral of a square, right? Integrating something that's positive. Well, if you remember the trigonometric uh, relationships, uh, uh, sine square theta is equal to half of one minus one, one, one minus, right? One minus cosine two theta, right? The cosine two theta part integrates to zero, and only the half part actually integrates to a non-zero. So anyway, so the first component is zero because we have sine theta, cosine theta. The second component is uh, um, do, 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 uh, minus this, gamma, and uh, oh, okay, so this is from zero to two pi, right? And the second part is uh, uh, do, 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 we have r uh, two pi, and uh, we have another r. The r actually cancels out. The R actually cancels out, and integrating a sine theta squared actually gets to half times the length of the integral. So that's actually pi, right? Okay, so that's a zero minus rho u infinity uh, gamma over two. So that's the pressure integral. All right. Okay, uh, any questions? The integral might be a little bit, uh, yes? Yeah, there's row of the airport. Are we assuming that? Or, uh, like, we can't confuse about the missing things. So, so the, we enforce the current condition of the setting edge, but yeah. not necessarily at the whole airfoil? Yeah, not at the whole airfoil, okay. right? So, so, as I said, this is a very simple model of the flow around an airfoil. It is not a good model of the flow through the airfoil. Okay. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you have a question? Mm -hmm. 
Oh, why is there a negative sign? Yes, because I'm computing the integral of pressure times the unit outward normal. What does that mean? That means I'm computing the force uh, exerted by the control volume to the outside of the control volume, right? So the actual answer of what is the uh, pressure force on this control volume should be the negative of what I computed over here, right? So what I need to actually the answer should be integral of P times negative of uh, this outward normal, right, dS, which should be 0 and a positive u, uh, rho u infinity gamma over 2. Yeah, thank you for pointing that out. So that should be the uh, correct answer. All right. OK, any more questions? Uh, number four is uh, uh, the total momentum flux into the control volume it turns out to be the same as the total pressure force, right? I mean, it, it, in, in the practice question, uh, there is also an answer that actually calculates the total momentum flux, but uh, uh, here it doesn't require you to do so. Basically, it asks you to uh, do the momentum uh, conservation, right? So uh, if the pressure force is this and the momentum flux is also this, right? then it, you can just use a conservation of momentum to figure out the lift per unit span actually has to be basically double of this rho infinity times gamma not divided by two right so basically that's a, a derivation of the kara Joukowsky theorem all right okay so so basically that's a uh, that's basically saying that uh, the force on this so so the flow field is a is a steady state right there is no unsteadiness so the change of momentum is zero. So that means the total force plus the flux into the volume has to be zero, right? What are the total forces? The total forces are the forces onto this control volume from the nearby flow plus the force onto the control volume from the airfoil, right? Okay, so, uh, so if, the, uh, if the momentum flux is equal to this, then the total force has to be negative of this, right? And there is also a pressure force equal to this, which means the force from the airfoil has to be downward and equal to this magnitude. That's the force exerted onto the fluid by the airfoil, right? That's equal to that, downward. Which means the force exerted by the fluid on the airfoil is going upward and of this value. All right? OK, make sense? Yes. Why? Why do you need to clarify the factor? Oh, this is because I said that there is also a momentum flux, right? So let me just write out the total momentum flux is equal to rho u infinity gamma over two, right? Oh. So so that has to be equal to, uh, is equal to the previous answer, right? Plus, uh, plus a uh, force by airfoil right so that means the force by airfoil uh, has to be uh, one second no 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 plus them not 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 equal so so the the uh, this is the momentum flux plus uh, the the force by the outside fluid plus the force by the airfoil has to be equal to uh, zero right that's equal to zero. That means the force by the airfoil has to be negative of rho u infinity gamma, right? And which means the force on the airfoil is going to be positive rho u infinity gamma. Okay. Okay. So finally, it asks you to plug in this gamma, right? And the lift is going to be, so lift is equal to this. Lift is equal to rho u infinity uh, gamma would be this guy uh, three what three pi over two uh, u infinity sine alpha, right? So how does the result differ differ from thin FO theory, right? So thin FO theory tells me that uh, L is equal to half of rho u infinity squared times 2 pi alpha, right? And uh, uh, this answer turns out to be 
well, if we just uh, pull out a row infinity square, uh, you can pull out these, and uh, uh, you get actually 3 pi times uh, sine alpha, right? So the sine alpha actually agrees with alpha at small angle of attack, right? Sine alpha is uh, approximately equal to alpha. So if you have alpha, sine alpha, like at small angles, you have a tangent, uh, like <laughs> you have a tangent line. So this and this actually agrees, but the 3 pi does not agree with 2 pi, right? And if you want this to actually agree, instead of enforcing on the trailing edge, you should actually enforce the cut condition at three quarters of the cord, so that this length is actually half of C. If you actually make this half of C, you can figure out that uh, uh, the result is going to agree with the uh, Dinafo theory. All right. Yes. How would you calculate that total momentum plus for uh, like? I mean, I know it's stay on the problem, but how would the total momentum flux be that? Yeah, so you calculate the total momentum flux by actually doing another integral, which is very similar to this. So the other integral, the total momentum flux would be an integral, uh, integral of the velocity dot with n, right? The basically the velocity in the normal direction times velocity uh, and uh, calculated using ds and you have to plug in velocity plug in uh, n and uh, do another integral also using uh, trigonomic uh, relations so it turns out to be the uh, to be the same yes um, would there be any reason that you like want to make the spin integral theory consistent with if that you want to do the entire condition at So there is motivation because uh, uh, this model, right? If we want to use this model, this model is a lower fidelity model than thin air for theory, right? So it does make sense to have some kind of an empirical adjustment to this theory so that it fits a higher fidelity model like thin air for theory. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right. That's. Uh, yeah, that's uh, actually uh, a lot of uh, lifting line theory code uh, enforces the color condition at uh, three quarter of the code. Okay, uh, let's actually, I, I might not have time to go through the uh, entirety of the two other problems, but uh, first of all, let's consider a single vortex on the swept wing, right? And I'm calculating the induced velocity at uh, the center of uh, the left uh, uh, half of the wing. So this is really a test of uh, uh, using the formula of uh, induced flow, right? Uh, uh, the induced flow, especially, let, let me just uh, write it down. Okay, so first of all, because we are, uh, all these uh, vortices lies on the same xy plane, right? So the only induced velocity at the point A, which is also on the same plane, is in the z direction, right? So let's just uh, write, uh, uh, write uh, not a vector, let's, let's just uh, write uh, uh, the scalar. Uh, w, and if you look at this point, the, the point is already on this vo uh, this vortex, so it has no influence from itself, but it does have influence from let's say one, two, and the three, right? So basically, the question asks you to add up the influence from all the three vortices, and all of them has a uh, let's see. First of all, let's figure out the sign, right? All of them have if you if you use the right hand rule. Uh, induces a downward velocity over there. So let's just uh, put a negative sign in the beginning. So gamma over 4 pi is the constant uh, that's common among everything. And then uh, from term number 1, we have 1 over, first of all, the distance, right? What is the distance uh, from here to here? So we know that this uh, uh, the span is equal to b. So the distance here, uh, actually the length of this is b over square root of 2. So the half of the length, right? Because of the 45 degrees, this is the right angle. Uh, so we have uh, this distance is b over two times square root of two, right? Okay, and we also need uh, uh, the difference between the sine angles. So uh, we have a zero over here, right? So because it's a, a right angle, but uh, uh, there is a non-zero sine angle over here. So it's sine of this angle, we get uh, uh, 
yeah, uh, we get uh, what is it? So, yeah, if if we do the math, uh, uh, this is a fact of uh, if if this is uh, a, this is uh, two a, right? And this is uh, square root of five a. So basically, the sine angle would be two over square root of five minus zero. So that's the from the uh, from the first uh, vortex. Okay. So let's uh, look at the second and the third vortex. From the second vortex, uh, we have a infinitely large angle from here, right? So, okay, so let's first uh, figure out uh, the distance. The distance of this point uh, to this vortex is uh, uh, three quarters b, right? I mean, so this is three quarter b, and uh, we are going to do this vortex last, uh, it's one quarter b. And the angles are uh, one minus, uh, you need to figure out the sign of this angle and uh, uh, because this is 3, this is 1 and it turns out to be 1 over square root of 10. Okay, and finally you have the last uh, uh, you have the last part over here uh, and it's 1 over a quarter b and 1 minus uh, the sign angle is 1 over square root of 2. Right, so, so that's uh, that's basically the summation of these uh, three contributions from the three vortices. It's basically an exercise using the formula. Yes? What is that? Well, it's like three over, what, what is that? Like, 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 uh, what color is it? Red. Uh, here? Like, no. uh, oh, here. Oh, no, no, no. It's, uh, it's just the same. The distance between a and the first vortex is b over two times the square root of two. Let me write it more clearly. Two times square root of two, right? Yeah. Uh, this lag guy has a length of b over square root of two, so the distance uh, between this and this is b over two times square root of two. Yes. You said we were talking. You got like the one minus one over square root ten. Oh, okay. So. Uh, one is from the angle, right, the sign of the angle uh, between the distance to this vortex and uh, the infinite uh, end of the vortex. So it's a sign of uh, 90 degrees, right? So, I mean, the, the, the one is uh, there uh, when a vortex goes to infinity, right? So, so for example, if you have a double infinite vortex, you would get one minus minus one. So you get a factor of two, which cancels the four, uh, four in the four pi and the make it two pi, right? That's why like a two-dimensional vortex has gamma over two pi. So, so the one is from like the infinite uh, uh, direction, and the one over square root of ten is the sine angle of, uh, yeah, is the sine of this angle, right? It's sine of this angle. For this angle, uh, you get a factor of uh, one by three uh, for this triangle. So. So the uh, hypotenuse would be square root of 10. Okay. Right, so it's 1 over square root of 10 as the sine angle. Yeah, well, we're kind of, uh, this is kind of the, the easiest to calculate case for a swept wing, right? The, the 45 degree case. Uh, otherwise, you get all kinds of uh, different angles. All right, yes? Just to clarify, we're saying that root 5a is the same as Mm. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. That's right. Uh, the the root five a. Yeah. So yes. So so basically, if this is a, uh, this would be a over square root of two, right? So so basically, you get two different uh, triangles. Uh, this triangle has a this triangle has a is a little bit thinner than this triangle, right? And uh, this is actually a square root of two uh, smaller than this. Okay, so you see the hypotenuse that they share. They yeah, have the same length, right? Yeah, yeah the hypotenuse that they share is the same length, the uh, square root uh, of five times a. But uh, this side is different, right? Uh, I mean, yeah, one square root of one smaller. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. All right. Yes. Like the one that's 
back to the sign here. Okay. Yeah, so, so we are always, uh, so the angle we are looking at is the angle between uh, the connecting, uh, the, the, the line between the point and the end of the vertex versus the line that is the shortest distance to the line on which the vertex lies. Right, so, so for example, for number two vertex, we would be looking at, uh, uh, we, we take one end and connect it to A, so that's one line. Another line is look at what is the shortest distance to the line that defines the vertex, and it's the sign of uh, uh, this angle. And then just in this case, it happens this angle is the same as this angle, right? so we use that. Right. Okay. Um, okay. So so that's that's the uh, induced velocity, and assume the wing is uh, flying at a speed of u infinity in the negative x direction, right? So uh, which means the free stream is in the positive x direction, and uh, uh, the airfoil is at alpha degree angle of attack. Uh, so, so basically, it asks you to uh, take u infinity, right? U infinity and add this uh, uh, W, which is negative. And uh, uh, yeah, it, it essentially looks at uh, what is, how is this angle changing the effective angle of attack? So alpha effective is equal to alpha minus uh, arc sine of, actually arc tangent of, um, well, it, it's actually, it's actually plus because the W is negative, uh, W over U infinity, right? So that's going to be the effective uh, uh, angle of attack. And finally, uh, it asks you to describe, but you don't have to solve it, uh, but essentially uh, describe how the circulation gamma can be related to this effective angle of attack, uh, the court length and the free stream velocity. So, and, uh, uh, so this combining this equation with the equation for W is going to get to a closed form that you can solve for this uh, uh, this gamma, right? So, so if the if the gamma, uh, we, we can basically use uh, use the thin airflow theory to predict the lift coefficient, right? Mm -hmm. And therefore, to predict how much lift there is, and we can also use a kuda jokowski theorem to relate that lift you computed from thin airflow theory to how much circulation you have, how much gamma you have. So that gives you an equation that you can solve for gamma. So basically, it's a, it asks you to uh, describe this. I mean, it's it's a dis it's describing a procedure that you went through in your homework, right? All right. Okay. So let me uh, uh, go to the last problem. So so the last problem is basically uh, like thin airflow theory and uh, stability. It asks you to consider uh, to uh, consider a uh, an airplane with two wings, a main wing and a horizontal tail, okay? And uh, both have the same chord length. And uh, to make the problem simple, we are also saying uh, both of them have the same span, which is not very realistic, but like uh, uh, it makes the calculation a little bit easier. And also the span is much larger than the chord, so that you don't have to consider any three-dimensional effects. So it's just a two-dimensional problem. And the distance between the uh, trailing edge of the wing and leading edge of the uh, horizontal tail is uh, two times the chord length. So first question is at zero degrees angle of attack, what is the lift per unit span, right? So basically you, you just uh, read uh, uh, the lift coefficient and moment coefficients from here, right? So, so basically the horizontal tail contributes nothing uh, in this case, okay? And uh, the aerodynamic moment uh, per span, you, you basically, it's basically testing the definition of the lift coefficients and the moment coefficients. You just uh, multiply them with half of rho v u infinity squares uh, times c, or c squared, if it's the moment. All right. Okay. And what is the center of lift? That basically tests the uh, formula for the center of the lift. Uh, because the uh, rear, because of the horizontal tail doesn't contribute anything, you can just uh, have xc is equal to... Uh, basically quarter chord, uh, let's say this is x equal to zero, right? Then it is equal to quarter chord times uh, uh, the chord times uh, cm over cl, right? And the both are actually reported over here. Okay, 
Now, uh, the, the real meat of the question starts with uh, using thinner for theory. How does the lift and moments uh, change, right, for both of them at one degree angle of attack? You have a question? Yeah. Um, after, or, or if, the, if the front wing generates a, uh, a generous lift compared downwards, that means that the, the horizontal tail is an, is an effective angle of attack. Are we not considering that? Right, so so we are not considering that because we are saying okay, uh, so f uh, we are saying the span is much much longer than the cord, right? No, no, uh, but I mean, I mean, like only considering two D two D effects, it will still be an, at an effective angle of attack if the air is moving downwards uh, at the trailing edge of the slant, right? Yeah, that's right, and uh, uh, that's a good uh, question. So yeah, I, I actually should also say that uh, we should neglect the effect, uh, the, the downwash from the front wing on the rear wing. So, but that that's a very good point. In reality, uh, there is actually a, yeah, there there is a also a downwash that comes from two dimensional effects. Yeah, that, that that's a good point. Okay, uh, so so yeah, if I if I have this uh, in the quiz, I should also say that uh, ask you to neglect uh, the downwash effect. Yeah, thanks. Okay, um, yeah, Let's see neglect the downwash uh, from the other surface. Okay, right. Um, now, basically, in thinner for theory, uh, the moment coefficient does not change, right? And the lift coefficient uh, goes up by 2 pi times 1 degree converted to radian, right? You do make sure you convert the 1 degree to radian because, before you multiply by 2 pi. So that's how uh, the lift coefficients are going to change. Now, um, at 1 degrees, so what is the total lift per span and the total aerodynamic moment around the quarter chord of the wing? So. So here, uh, this is uh, more of a tricky question because uh, I had a note over here, the moment coefficient of the horizontal tail is defined at, at its own quarter chord, not the quarter chord of the wing, right? So, but here I'm asking the total moment around the quarter chord of the front wing. So, so basically you have to consider, okay, so, uh, so we get a moment from the front wing itself, right? On the hind wing, uh, there is a lift, and there is no moment around uh, its own uh, quarter chord. But this lift, which you can calculate uh, from the one degree times uh, two pi, right? Does have a, this lift, it does have a moment around uh, the quarter chord of the front wing. And the moment uh, uh, lag is actually 3C, right? So basically, not only you have to con consider the moment from the front wing, you also have to add uh, uh, the moment from the horizontal stabilizer, all right, with uh, basically multiplying the lift of the horizontal stabilizer by a moment arm of 3C, right? Is it clear why we have to add that component? Okay, all right. And, uh, uh, right, finally, it asks you to recalculate uh, the center of lift at one degree angle of attack using the new, uh, new moment and the new, basically new total moment and the new total lift, right? and uh, uh, compare with this center of uh, a lift and uh, figure out, okay, is this system stable or not stable? All right, I, I, is it clear? I don't have time to work through this uh, uh, with numbers, but is it clear uh, what, you, yes? Um, yeah, pretty clear overall, I just have one question. You, you, you can you get the moment coefficients um, again, just to normalize like the perspective of what, what my question uh, Yes, right. yes. Uh, it asks you the lift and moment coefficient of the wing and the horizontal tail individually, right? And in problem four, then we combine them together, right? In problem four, we are no longer asking for coefficients, but the total uh, moment and the lift, yeah? I would just ask, would it be possible that you could work this out in the coefficient? Okay, sure, sure, yeah. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah, I'll do that. Other questions? Okay, so I'm going to be having an office hour uh, downstairs. Uh, you can keep asking any questions. All right, cool.